Welcome to Digital Softex. Today we are going to discuss about software development process model. Uh, in this session we will work on this agenda. Uh, what is software process model? Types of software process model. Uh, and we have different types of software process model such as waterfall model, iterative model and spiral model. So let's move towards what is software process model. In software engineering, software development is not a one day process or not a simple process because uh, software development is one of the complex system and one of the complex process in which we divide the software into distinct pages to improve the quality of the software and complete the project on time. So in software engineering, software development process is the process of dividing software development work into distinct pages. We divide the software development work into distinct pages. That is why to make software easily managed by the company. So now when we dividing the software into different processes because software development is not the name of the one activity process. It is the set of activities. When that of set, set of activities is managed, so then we make the software easily and the quality of software is assured. So on the basis of pro software product, the model is selected by software company. We have different types of software model. So uh, based on the project, based on the software that we need, the software company select the relevant model. So let's move towards to discuss about the different types of software process models. Uh, waterfall model. So as suggested from the name, when the water fall from a certain place, they cannot back towards. So in software engineering, waterfall model is used. First set of activity is requirements. We collect the user needs. We inspect the user needs. What are their requirements? What they expect from the system? So in waterfall model, we finding the user needs and requirements. When the requirements is complete, we move toward design. So design is the structure of the system and design specify how the system will work and what are the uh, user needs will be covered. So when the design is completed, we move towards implementation. We implement the design in some kind of language like C++, Java, whatever language we use. We, we implement that functionality that we have specified in the design. After the implementation, we verify the software. Verification is the process by which we can find that the software is meeting the user needs. When verification is done, we move towards maintenance. So maintenance, when we uh, get some kind of problem, we maintain that problem and get back the product to the uh, user. So now in waterfall model, when requirements are being collected from the user, so we move toward design. So in design phase, we make the design, then we implement that design. But from when we get some kind of problem, so from implementation, we cannot back toward design. So that is the very, very big disadvantage of waterfall model. So back, back process is not allowed. Until when we get some kind of problem in implementation, we move towards the requirement. We start uh, towards the requirements. We cannot beg towards that we get some kind of issue and we move towards design and we specify and then beg towards implementation. So when we get issues, problems in the software or when we change some kind of thing in software, we move towards the first step which is requirements. We cannot beg towards design. So that is why the disadvantage of waterfall model is there, that back process is not allowed. So we cannot back. We back, then we will start from the first step, which is requirements. So waterfall model is really very easy model. We get the user needs. We uh, design that needs. And design is the process by which we specify the what kind of functionality the use the system will provide and how they will work so we implement them we verify them and we maintain them so when to use waterfall model 
Waterfall model is one of the rigid model in software engineering. Uh, this is because each step is to be completed before going towards the next step. So we get back towards, so we complete the step of requirements, then we move toward design. Then we complete the step of design, then we move towards implementation. We complete the step of implementation, we move towards verification, and when we complete the step of verification, then we move towards maintenance because this is rigid model, this is not a flexible model. So we complete 100% every step, then we move towards the next step. So it is a disadvantage of waterfall model. So when we use waterfall, the requirement must be rigid. There is no change it accepted in the waterfall model. So the requirements is rigid. It is not a flexible. Uh, you can say the constant requirements, which is really very bad idea. Less chance of change in the system. So there's a minimum change possible, but, but some adding functionality, adding some kind of updates in the system is not possible. Because waterfall model is a rigid model and every step is complete. So usually used for big projects because uh, that is why usually used for big project it is not a good idea because what form model is ready and every day day to day this everything is changing so when we use water form model it is really very bad idea so it, it is a what model of software engineering so we study and we understand in many projects we use it uh, move towards the, the second model which is iterative model in this model we make a version of software according to the requirements we divide the requirements in iterative model we develop software in iteration release the software in different numbers of versions in each version we add functionality to the previous version for example version number one had contained two functions now we increase the functionality in version number two which is six functions no now iterative model is the model when we get the user requirements then if the user provide us not all the requirements we understand if the user provide us five requirements we make a version of a software which is a prototype by giving two functionality not implementing the whole requirements of the user so we making the demo we deliver the demo to the user so we make version number one so version number one contain two functions now in the next iteration then in the next iteration we increase the functionality of our prototype of uh, of the previous version so that is why uh, the versions are made and the functionality is added until we get the versions which contain all the user functionality so now iterative model is very very important and very impressive model because we understand the user requirements we implement them, we deliver to the user the demo, the prototype that it is correct. So you can early, you can get back early uh, the feedback from the user, which is really very, very uh, good for software quality. So it is the diagram of iterative model. We have requirements. Uh, we have design and implement in build number one or version number one. We test and implement. So now it is build number one. And the next step we make build number two we design and develop we design and develop the this this the previous system so the previous design we implement them we develop them by adding functionality so now we test and implement and build number three we increase the functionality of the previous version version number one build uh, version number two or build number one or build number two and build number three we increase the functionality and until we get the system we until we implement the whole user requirements so in iterative model, in iteratively we develop softwares and we providing a demo, a prototype to the user and then we back the system and we increase the functionality, we adding, constantly adding the functionality to the system until we get the whole system and until we implement the whole requirements of user. So that is iterative model. Uh, we have spiral model. Spiral model is the combination of waterfall model and iterative model. Each phase in spiral model begins with the design goal and ends with the client reviewing the products. Progress. So the spiral model was first mentioned by Barry Boehm in his 1986 paper. So in spiral model, let's see this example. We identify and understand the user requirements. Then we 
do the risk analysis we move towards build and test the software we move towards evolute the software whether it meet the customer need so then we move towards again identify and understand the requirements so now let's understand spiral model in spiral model the name is uh, due to this the shape of this uh, in 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 spiral model we minimize the risks when we have a lot of chance of risk in the system we use spiral model so in risk management we make a system uh, version or build number one then we manage the risks so we move towards prototype we make the prototype we move towards the design the system code code the system integrate the system combining the subsystems we test and implement now in this whole revolution we make a software so now in the next turn of this we have to minimize the risks because we have identified the objectives there are what kind of objectives that we will expect from the system we move towards the progress alternative evolution then we move towards product development next phase planning so in every phase we have to plan we have to minimize the risk in the spiral model just like in iterative model so in this model we minimize the risks when we have uh, idea in the mind that in this system we make uh, we get a lot of risks so for risk management we use and we um, just like uh, make versions and prototype in iterative model so in spiral model we focus upon the risk in the system so it's all about the software process model if you get any kind of issue uh, write your uh, query in the comment section so subscribe the channel for more videos and updates thank you